Good morning and welcome to worship. We are honored to have Terry leading us in a solo this morning. God bless America.
I see, I see the choir all standing. I thought maybe we were, we were getting ready for more music. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is the announcements. You can sit down if you'd like. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I don't know who would remember this or who would be part of this. I'm thinking for a while with the Philadelphia Flyers, which was an ice hockey team during some of their more um, victorious days, Cape... Smith singing God Bless America was their theme song because they came out of nowhere to win the Stanley Cup and they always they thought that was a good luck charm so she would actually see I think one of her last public performances was singing for the Flyers at the old Philadelphia Spectrum when they were playing so I'm sitting there hearing God Bless America and I'm thinking it's like watching be right before the Flyers game uh, good morning. Welcome this weekend of our 4th of July. And we truly do hope that God stands behind and guides our country as we celebrate the anniversary of our nation. Do we have any first-time visitors who would like to let us know who they are? We got a brochure for you. No, not this morning. Okay. Uh, next Friday dance is on July 15th. Uh, food is at 5 and music is at 6. And also, while I don't see it here, but I, oh yeah, there is, we'll get to that one. Okay, also a reminder that we put our offering plates, we don't want to pass the offering plate here, it's a free will offering. Um, if you forget to put your offering in during, as you come into church, um, you can put it in on the way out, or you can put it in as you come around for communion, however you'd like to do it. Um, all, it's your offerings that support the mission and the ministries of this church. Uh, COVID, our numbers seem to be holding steady in the county is around 230 cases a day. It seems to have done this. But the last article I read, it said it's starting to drop in general in Florida. So hopefully it's gonna start going back down again. Next mobile food pantry is on July 14th. That is Thursday at 3 p.m. Saturday, Janelle Month, Kyle Hall is in use. So the jam that day, which is next weekend, is going to be moved to July 10th. So the average, the, the, the weekly jam, which has been moved to Saturday, but because Saturday was already scheduled for something else, that jam will now be on Sunday. Um, karaoke. For those of you who are karaoke fans, um, we are going to be starting to have uh, karaoke here on, it's going to be the third, uh, fourth, fourth, sorry, fourth Friday of the month. So it's going to, the first time is going to be July 22nd at 6 p.m. Um, so is there any other, just get the date out there, get started now. Is there anything you want to say about that yet? Or? I'd love to, yes. Okay, well, come on up and say something about karaoke. I'll use that one right there. That one's. Is it on? Yeah, yes. it is now. Okay. Uh, if you've ever wanted to sing the songs of Elvis or Adele or Johnny Cash or anybody you can think of practically, please come join us for karaoke. We'll have, uh, you can dance to it. We'll have line dance music and it should be a good time and there'll be refreshments there for you. So please come out. It should be a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. And, oh, sorry. and we need any help we can get, too, to uh, help us there with uh, serving. So thanks for that, too. Thank you. If anyone is looking for an assigned envelope, so you can have a regular envelope that is assigned to you in a number, see Barbara, raise your hand, wave your hand. See Barbara after church, and she will sign you a number for an envelope. Um, are there any other announcements for the good of the family this week? Ah, okay. Good morning, everybody. I have the familiar clipboards that I will be passing around down one side and up the other for readers and ushers we need to fill in for this month and the coming months. I also 
did not have time to put it on pastor's announcements because I just got a call from uh, Dan McCoy last night that Mike McCoy uh, is in an assisted living facility up in Indiana. I have a dress and she says he would like uh, to keep in touch with everybody who is interested if you pass by the camera on the way to um, communion and stuff like that. I have a couple of addresses to hand out for that. That's it. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Seeing that we've come to the end of our announcement, I invite those who are able to stand and let's actually begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we tend to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins. Well, thank you for that, God. But delights in granting pardon and mercy. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. Oh, I got it, King. Love it, do it forever. 
grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us. With your spirit, accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn for her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her counseling breasts, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm, and dandled on her knees, as a mother comforts her child. So I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bodies shall flourish like grass and shall be known that the land of the Lord is with his servants and his indignation is against the enemies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsibly song, Psalm 66. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Be joyful, all the earth. Sing the, the glory of God's name. Sing the glory of God's praise. Say to God how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you. Sing to you, sing out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds toward all people. God turned the, turned the sea into dry land so that they may went so that they went through the water on foot. And they are rejoicing God. Ruling forever in might, God keeps watch over the nations. Let no rebels exalt themselves. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living. Second reading from Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourself are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will find, fulfill, you will fulfill the law of Christ. For in those who are nothing, think they are something, they deceive themselves. All will test their own work, then that work rather than their neighbor's work will become a cause for pride for all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow, and if you sow to your flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the spirit, you will reap eternal life from the spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work 
for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not perse be persecuted for, for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything but a new creation in everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the, the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't you love songs that you can sing along with and not have to worry about the words? <laughs> the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to him, the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labor deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its street and say, even the dust of the town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to me, whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, the Lord, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from the heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The gospel of our Lord. Praise Please be seated. Do I have kids? I see Kayla and Layla here. Kyla, Kyla, Kyla and Layla. Come on up. You're going to help me out. There you go. Now, 
you go on trips? If you go on trips, what do you pack? What do you pack in your bag? Does your mom or your Gigi, your dad tell you to pack stuff? What do you pack? I pack my blankie. You pack your blankie. What else do you pack? My pillow. Your pillow. What do you pack? My stuff. <laughs> your stuff. What? Like, do you just take, just throw things in the bag or you just, is there, is there certain things that you make sure you take? Clothes. Clothes. Change your clothes. Clean underwear. <laughs> Not those ones with the holes in them. No. Right? Do you take toothbrush? Toothpaste? pair of shoes, extra shoes, extra socks. What else do you pack? If you're taking medicine, do you pack the medicine that you're taking? Yeah. So you go out and you have all this stuff you pack. Okay. Now in this lesson this morning, Jesus sends his disciples out into the world. And what does he tell them to take? Did you listen? You don't take a bag, a purse, a pair of shoes, a sleeping bag, an extra blanket, no pillow, no stuffed animals. Take nothing. Where do you think you could go if you took nothing with you? What, what does that mean if you have to go out with nothing with you? What are you going to do? Where do you go outside? We need to go back and bring stuff. You're going to go back and buy stuff? Bring st no, you go back and bring. No, he's helped to take nothing. You have to trust that wherever you go, people will provide what you need. You have to have faith that God will provide for you and that the people that you see will be acting for God and provide. Okay? So it's all about trusting that when you send out that those who are sending you are, trust, are, are faithful that, they will, that you will be provided for. Okay? So, and that's what God does for us. He sends us out, gets us out each morning. And what does God provide for us each morning? What comes up in the morning? Sunshine. Sunshine. And where does your breakfast come from? Do you have to go out and, 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 and pick grain and turn it into cereal? Or is it in a cabinet provided for you? Right, people are providing for you. That's part of how that works. And God has provided for you beautiful days, warm places to sleep loving parents, a Gigi who takes you to church on Sunday. So that's all, yeah, isn't that wonderful? Let's pray. God, we confess that we don't always trust. We sometimes pack so much baggage on us that it drags us down. Help us to learn to trust you and to trust the people that you put in our lives to provide. We pray us in Jesus' name and you say, Amen. Thank you. Oh, guess what? We got a whole new basket this morning. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Oh, that's a dog. You can grab one thing. Hmm. Hmm. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? It's, it's okay. Thank you. Should play the Jeopardy music. Bum, 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 bum. Who here was a Boy Scout? Do you have any Boy Scouts here, former Boy Scouts? Raise your hand. Come on. Who else was a Boy Scout? A Girl Scout? Okay. Who's a Boy, boy Scout? A Scout Master. Okay. What is this Boy Scout motto? Be prepared, right. Be prepared. And it's a great motto. I mean, I, th I often look back, and I was a Boy Scout from a Cub Scout, starting out as what was the first one, Bobcat badge, all the way up through the Weeblos into scouting up until I was an Eagle Scout. And I stayed involved in scouting even a few years after I graduated from high school. Okay, And there was a lot of lessons that I learned in scouting. And one of the big ones that has carried me through my adult life is the idea of being prepared. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? What are you going to need to do it? Okay? And that doesn't matter whether it was working in construction, whether it was raising a family, 
or whether it's being a pastor, you have to be prepared, okay? And I could pack for a weekend or a week or three days of camping in a matter of minutes. I had a routine. I knew exactly what I had to do, what I had to, where things were, what I needed, my sleeping bag, my backpack, the camping supplies like a mess kit that converted into a frying pan and I could eat out of it, a vittle kit, which was a knife, fork, and spoon that fit together, a canteen, make sure you fill it with clean water before you go. Off times we have food already bought, we would, one of the things that was great, we would freeze a steak solid and then that would keep all the rest of the food cold. And we'd all, you pack it in a certain way, if you're gonna hike, you're gonna put it on your back. So you always pack the stuff that would lay flat first so that would lay up against your back because the worst thing in the world if you put that mess kit in first and that metal buckle would stick in your back and dig you because you had to carry this pack might weigh 30 35 pounds and if you're going hiking you would have carry that baggage with you and that translated into later adult life because for a while i traveled around the country fitting out department stores and i would come home every weekend or every other weekend and learning how to pack what I was gonna need to get it in the suitcase, to travel along to get there was part of the routine that I had to have down cold. The only thing that I regularly forgot was toothpaste. And there was one point in my life I must have had 40 or 50 partial tubes of toothpaste because let's face it, you can pretty much buy toothpaste anywhere. So when I read this morning, this lesson, where Jesus is sending his disciples out in the first century where you didn't have a credit card where you could go into your local store and get what you could need. I mean, nobody was gonna sell toothpaste at a little 7-Eleven or Wawa on the corner, right? To go out, and what did he say? Take no purse, no spare sandals, no spare sack, don't take a sleeping bag. Don't take any of the stuff that you would normally go with when you traveled. And my reaction as an Eagle Scout was like, you're sending them out unprepared. They are not prepared for all the things that they might encounter. I mean, if it's more than a day's journey to the village that you're going to, he's going to go, he's sending them out where he is planning to go. Okay? So... If he's traveling in somewhat of a line, there's maybe more than a day or two be, they're traveling they're gonna do. Not taking a set of matches that are dipped in paraffin that would get, wouldn't get wet if you happen to get in a rainstorm. Not taking a poncho that would fold up nice and tight and not take up a lot of space. But if it gets to a downpour, there is nothing like a poncho when you're out camping. He's sending all his disciples all 70 of them out unprepared. But he's sending them out in faith and in trust. And he has been preparing them for this mission. He has been teaching them by example. He's been showing them what needs to happen and what needs to do. And he's been sh pass, pa planting the seeds of trusting in God, planting the seeds of having faith that this is God's plan and God will provide. If you go someplace and they receive you, then just stay in that house. Eat what they provide. And don't feel bad about it because you deserve your pay. And he's been showing them by laying on of hands and teaching them what it means to heal, okay? Now, we've done the same thing here. We have several people went through classes for laying on of plans for healing, and it's about faith, it's about trust. But he's prepared them for that. And he also sends them out in pairs. He doesn't send anybody out alone. He's, they're sent out with someone who's got your six, got your back. We were taught this when we were taught whether it was swimming 
or whether it was going out on camp, you never went out by yourself. You always had at least one other person with you so you could watch out. And that same thing Jesus said, he sends them out in pairs to go out to all the places he's going to go to prepare the way for him. He also sends them out with one other instruction. If you're not received somewhere, well then shake the dust off your feet. Now, you would think that it's kind of a belligerent thing to go out, well, you don't want me? Fine. But it goes deeper than that. Do not let your reject, that rejection ruin your journey. Do not carry that baggage of being rejected with you. Let it go. Let it go. Okay? Shake the dust off your feet. Shake it off. That's where maybe the expression comes from. Shake it off. When you get in a rejection, when someone doesn't want to hear what you have to say, when someone doesn't want to be a friend or doesn't want to be an associate, just let it go. Jesus sends them out traveling very lightly, but doesn't send them out with nothing because Jesus has sent them out, blessing them, sending them out, trusting that the Spirit will go with them. Jesus has sent them out with the light of God in their hearts. They might be traveling light, but they're traveling with the light. And it's part of his instructions in the gospel. It says, don't let your light hide. Nobody lights a lamp and puts it on underneath a basket. No, you open, lift that basket off. You put it up on top of the lad stand. You don't put it in a pot. You crack the pot open. Let people see your light in this world. So then they come back, and they're all excited. And they're saying, hey, the demons submitted to us. We healed people. We were welcomed, and it was a wonderful thing. Doing ministry is an exciting, wonderful thing. And Jesus says, yes, I saw the evil fall from the sky while you were out there. I saw how it was going on. He said, however, do not rejoice in this. Rejoice that you were trusting enough to do it. Rejoice that your name has been written in heaven, that you have taken that message out. And that's the last thing he prepared them with was the message. And that message is the same message that Jesus preached more than anything else, and which is the same message that we have today. The kingdom of God is drawing near. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is present all around us, but it's not already formed. That's the same message that we have today. Go out and speak of the kingdom of God. We aren't going out. I mean, we talk all sorts in the, in the modern church today about making disciples, drawing people into a relationship with Christ. The very word evangelism literally translates anything that you do to start a person's relationship with God or to help a person grow in their relationship with God. This is what evangelism is. And we here are in this morning, the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, ELCA. But that evangelism word scares people because we think that makes us responsible for converting people to Christianity. But it doesn't mean that at all. It just means that you go out with your light and that what something you have is so attractive that this is what draws people into this relationship. It doesn't mean you go out in the street corner with a, with a sign, and I admire the guys who do it, but you go out in the sign that says, repent or die, the end is near. That's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God, where a place and a time where we care for one another, we love one another, and we share the grace and forgiveness of God with, all, with one another in all that we do. And one another means everybody, okay? Now, how do we do that in today's world? 
Well, sometimes it's just being provocative about our faith. Alice gave me permission to share this. When she was doing the formation group, she was involved in other groups of people, and she would share a little about what she was doing. Well, what are you doing this? Well, well this week I'm going to try to go a whole day without saying anything negative. And after a while, her friends started asking, well, what are you doing this week? Or what are you doing that week? They were curious about her growing in her faith. Now, she wasn't doing this alone. We were doing this in a group. And we were all challenging one another, challenging ourselves to grow in the spirit, to grow in our faith. And but by sharing what she was going on, just an offhand way, she wasn't out. You weren't preaching on the corner, were you, Alice? You didn't have a sign saying, repent or die. You weren't signing up souls for Jesus, were you? Not yet. Not yet. But yet, you don't know what seeds, she doesn't know what seeds, I don't know what seeds were planted in among the community. Maybe someone belongs to the Episcopal Church up there going towards Spring Hill and decided, hey, pastor, they talked to their pastor, hey, they call them fathers in the Episcopal Church, hey, father, I'd like to grow in my faith. What can I do? You don't know. You don't know because it is not your responsibility to bring people to Christ. It is your responsibility to spread the good news of the coming kingdom of God. And we've misconstrued that in so many different ways to the point that there have been times in our history that by threat of death, Jesus did not send anybody out with a sword or today with a gun packing. Jesus sent no one out, take your weapon with you because you don't know who you're going to meet on the road. Okay? No. But there have been times in the history of the church that we have made converts by threat of death. Okay? That's not the way it works. People will come to faith because the Holy Spirit has sent you as a witness to the beautiful thing that faith has done to your life, to the provocative things that faith is doing to your life, to the exciting things that faith is doing to your life. And that same spirit will enlighten and empower and equip not them, but you too. In this lesson this week, Jesus has sent his followers out, trusting them and equipping them with the good news. We are still called to go out and we are still equipped with the same good news. The kingdom of God is near. Everybody can be in a relationship with God. God's grace, God's love is for everybody, whether you want it or not, or whether you believe it or not. Remember what he said about if they reject you in that town to shake the dust off your feet, just shake it off and move on? He follows that up with, but the kingdom of God is still going to come. It does not depend on whether or not they accept it or reject it, just like it doesn't depend on your testimony out there. However, in here, when we come here, this is where we have, every, we have each other's back. This is where we are a community that we're looking out for and caring for one another. This is where we are learning how to live and share that good news. To be provocative about the kingdom of God coming near. The kingdom of God right out there as near as you can almost touch it. But it's not quite here yet. In here is when we learn to share our faith stories. In here is when we learn to share the reasons that we give. Coming soon to this congregation near you, we will be inviting people to get up, and it's going to start with the leadership, and we are going to share. If you remember way back when I first started here and COVID was shutting us down and we were doing videos, that we had our council people, the majority of our pe council people got up and shared a faith story, shared about 
why they believed, what, what, what fed them. Well, we want to start sharing that story about why do we give? Why do we do what we do? Why do we write that check out each week? Or why do we come and serve that once a month at the food pantry? Or why do we sing in the choir, aside from the fact that we like to sing? What is it about this? Because when you can learn to start sharing it here and it becomes natural, then when you're out there in our entering the mission field, when you're out there in your mission field, then when the Spirit prompts you, someone might say, Jack, why do you go to church? Or I go because God has blessed me in so many ways, and this is very least that I can do to give thanks. That's what we are being prepared for. The harvest is ready. The crops are burgeoning on the, in the fields. The wheat is leaning over. But the laborers are fewer than ever. Come. Join the harvest. Share in your faith here so you can share in your faith out there. The kingdom of God is near. Let's see it come fuller. Amen.
In Christ, you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. We believe in him and are marked with this holy and promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. Where this week have you been blessed by God so much that you would like to share it in a form of joy? Do we have any joys to share for God in prayer? Nobody's had a joy? <laughs> okay, I see a bunch up here. Pass the mic around. Linda, you shook your hand, you get to go first. Well, I had a wonderful time in Wyoming and Montana from the 7th to the 21st. I got back two days, and now my uh, daughter, son-in-law, and my grandson, which is eight years old, is playing me out, and they leave tomorrow. <laughs> so a double joy, right, just, just from passing it down. Go on, Elaine. Next week, I go to Holland to see my son and his family for the first time in three years. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I am so looking forward to that. And traveling mercies, may the flights all connect. May the, yes, and please, dear God, please yes. don't let it be canceled. Yes. We are thankful that finally we have a date on August 3rd for surgery for Sandy. Okay. Finally. Finally. We are so joyed. They had it on the 9th. They called and rescheduled for the August 3rd, and we are all thrilled. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Yes, we can continually lift Sandy up. Other joys? Larry. Larry. Okay, Larry, you got a mic back there. Oh, back here. Okay. Making sure I get my exercise. You? Okay. Uh, we are very thankful that our son was finally able to unload and sell a boat that had given him lots of headaches for the last two years. Oh, amen. <laughs> What's that saying? The best two days of the boat owner's life, the day they buy it and the day they sell it. I also found that belongs to swimming pools, too. So, any other joys? 
Kevin, that's. First of all, the boat's a hole in the water that you just put money in it. Yes. <laughs> but yesterday, we had over 70 people in the hall. 25 musicians, 40 people came to listen to them, and about six of us did the serving and what have you. But you know what? I, this is a family. Any place I go and get together with a bunch of people, I feel like they're all family. They are. They are. They're all God's children. And okay. that's, you know, that's something to be joyful about. That's it is. Yes, it is. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Wayne. Oh, thank you. Kyla asks me every week, <laughs> when are we going to express our joys? But we truly have too many to count each day. Um, these guys, yesterday we spent with my daughter in Sarasota. Family will gather tomorrow. Um, it's, it's just life. There's so much good to be found, and we get pounded with so much negative, but there's right. so much good. So just joyful to be grateful and to have that ability. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Amen. I shared a couple weeks ago about my brother-in-law was having uh, kidney problems. He had developed an autoimmune disorder um, it starts with a V, can't remember it now. But it was causing his kidneys to shut down and he had to do dialysis. Well, he got a diagnosis, he was on the road to recovery. Well, I called last Sunday to ask my sister how Lenny was doing. And Lenny answered the phone. So I said, well, I, I called to ask Lynn, but since you answered the phone, how are you doing? He said, and then I ended up hearing for an hour and a half how well he is doing. This is not just that he is feeling better and recovering from what was really frightening. He was talking about all the different ways how grace had entered his life. Now, my brother-in-law is Jewish, and he is a, he's not a, a devout, heavy practicing Jew, but that is who he is. And hanging around with a bunch of Christians, he said, you know, Jim, I think about like you, you don't like to try to shove Jesus down my throat. We can talk about faith as faith and not about doctrine or so I had this long conversation with Lenny now I understood he was back in the hospital for some more dialysis because he wasn't getting the readings but he had a very positive attitude about what was going on and he said he expected this they said it would take a while for his kidneys to get fully um, back up to steam so if the numbers drop he knows it's there but he's he 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 shared two things that were very important as you go through those dark times, especially with illness. React to the facts and the signs. Don't react to the fear because the fear will take you down. And the other thing he said was trust the process in the moment. He says so often people, you know, they're looking that they want to be out of the hospital by Friday, but that might not happen. So you just trust where you're at that that is where you're supposed to be at that moment which is a wonderful lesson for all of us in life, that we trust the facts that are us and not the fear, and that we trust where we, we, we live in that moment that we're at and not projecting ahead that whatever it is, I'm going to accomplish this by this birthday or I'm going to be free of this by that time in life, but that forgetting that we live along each line. So this was really a wonderful conversation. So I, I raise that up in joy, that he is on the mend, but that also he's had this, and he said it was a stirring of the spirit. He's feeling a calling to something. So how about now concerns? Those things, those people, those situations that we are praying for. Um, yes, Vinny. Is he on? Testing one, two. No. Larry's back there fiddling with the dials. Testing one, two. Okay, okay you're on. Yeah, my oldest son, Vinny's going for hip surgery. He didn't get the appointment right now. He's a TV cameraman, and he carries a robotic camera. So I think that did him in, so. Oh, yeah. So I'll keep him in your prayers. That's your son, Vinny? Okay. Pastor, I have, I have one joy, 
And then I have one concern, if I may. <clears throat> the joy, I first, uh, I got a call from Kathy Schneider yesterday. Uh, she still has these spinal problems, but they have, they're going to try a treatment rather than surgery initially. So we're going to be cautiously joyous that maybe this treatment will help and she wouldn't have to go through the surgery that she did. Uh, the concern that I have is for Marilyn Allison. She shared with me today that uh, they had to postpone her surgery. There are some heart issues, and she's going to have to do some testing. So let's all keep Marilyn in our prayers. Yes. Thank you. Um, while we're sa sharing joy and concern, the joy about Sandy was shared that they finally got a, a surgery date for her. But the, just the ongoing concern is she is... Really, this is her family away from uh, her family. And that not being able to be with us as the different things we do is really taking a toll on her. Plus, being stuck that she can only find certain positions where she can even just be comfortable enough to not be in pain. So continue to keep her in prayers. Um, other concerns that we are going to raise up here. Hi, Susie. I have a small joy, okay? And I, I didn't think about it until now, and it's very small, and it's kind of silly, but the other night, I fell in the doorway of my bedroom. Um, my cat likes to kind of guard the territory. That is her territory, and um, I kind of lost my balance, and I stepped on her tail, and she squealed, and then my right knee all the weight on the right side of my body came crashing down on my right knee. I fell on my right knee and it hurt really bad and it was really sore. And then I, you know, I took a little bit of ibuprofen, but I laid down, you know, I just elevated my leg, you know, thinking, okay, tomorrow this is going to be very black and blue because it was pretty intense. And um, I immediately felt this warmth around my leg for probably about 45 minutes and I fell asleep and I told my sister about it and she said just put some ice on it and I had no ice but it's it's like the pain was gone within about 10 minutes and I don't have a bruise on my knee amen it's so I mean God is great and you know I talked to my sister about it she says how's your knee and I said well there's really no bruise I sent her a picture and she said I was praying for you so the power of pray prayer really works absolutely, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Praying for one another. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. With this 4th of July weekend, let's pr pray for all the people who have made this world peaceful and are still doing it. Our military that can't be with families, our military that are here, our military that are going through a lot of problems for their service. And be aware that the fireworks can be very upsetting to a veteran who have been in the war-torn area. We have a neighbor who had a bomb go off over his head in Afghanistan. And we will not shoot off fireworks for that reason because he gets upset. So keep that in mind, and God bless them all. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I was younger, many moons ago, fireworks were very strictly controlled, and you couldn't just set them off anywhere, at least where I was living in. But now it seems like everybody and their brother's setting them off, and yet, yet in the ER. So that is also a concern that those who decide to celebrate with explosives are safe and stay safe. Um, I also want to lift up a prayer in the sense that it is our country's uh, birthday that we'll be celebrating, that it seems like we're becoming very divided in this country. And I read an article about, you know, the division between red America and blue America and what's causing that divide to get wider and wider. That we can start to listen to one another and respect what each has to say, and we're, learn to find that middle ground where we can both live with it and that we can continue as a nation and not end up as a bunch of 
people throwing rocks at each other. So, do we have any other concerns that we want to lift up right now? Yes, please. I think we all have a big concern for the folks in Ukraine and the war that is going on there that is causing a disturbance throughout the rest of the world. I think we need prayers and many prayers for those people. Also, one thing that I deal with, worked off a lot with young people, and it just scares me to death of what is going on with this fentanyl that is getting across our borders and getting in the hands of young kids who do not even know what they're doing, and one little pill will kill them. We have to pray to God that, that this can come to a stop. Um, that's some concerns that I have. I just wanted to bring that up. Yes. Since tomorrow is our birthday, or 4th of July, could we all stand, all military people, and maybe present to them how we are safe with them and uh, do for that? Yeah. Why don't we, all those who served, let us, let us give you thanks for that. Thank you. Thank you. You sharing a joy or are you just saying you were in the service? All right, what did you serve? Huh? Okay, bring it on. You know, the joy that I have, of course, is that we're all here, we're great Americans, and we love our country. And God bless us. God bless us, yes. Okay. Let us pray. Ah, one more thing before we pray. Thank you. For those of you who are joining us from home, if you have a joy concern, a, a, a prayer that you would like to share with us, a joy or concern, these are three different ways you can get them to us, our Facebook address, our email address, and our church phone number. And you can contact us any one of those ways, and your prayer will be lifted next week. We thank you. Now let us pray. Gracious Lord, we lift up all those ways that we are thankful. We lift up all those ways where you have touched our lives and invited us into a, a deeper relationship with you and one another through you. We thank you for healing and protection and positive outcomes in life. Lord, we lift up those in our community who are sick and suffering, who are struggling, who are waiting for surgery, Lord. Be with them and help us to be with them and carry them through. We lift up those who have served. And we ask that they truly see their role as peacekeeper. Lord, we pray for a day that war is no more and your kingdom has been fulfilled. We pray this and all things trusting in your goodness and mercy through the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and let the people say, Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with one another. And then share those sanitation stations as we don't want to be passing things besides peace.
Let us pray the offering prayer with one voice. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast upon your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit with the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And now so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. Gave it to all his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In that same manner, he also took the cup after supper and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. We can do better than that, folks. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, I invite you to be so bold as to pray these words as we've been taught them. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are invited to this table. Let us receive and be gracious. Please be seated.
life-giving God, through this meal, you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, bless you, comfort you, and prepare you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Amen.